Hello and welcome to Metal Shape with Tom. So, you join me uh, on this review for the new Stacey's Planishing Hammer. I received this the other day, seen it on their Instagram page about a month ago. It went live on their website the other day. So, I put my order in and the next day it arrived. So, I'm very happy uh, that it's arrived. Can't wait to give it a go. And I'm just gonna explain to you some of the features on it. Um, how I would use a planishing hammer and basically my thoughts and opinions on it. So can't wait to uh, start using this and uh, I'll show you now. Okay, so this is the machine all set up there. I'm just going to show you a couple of features it has. You have a tool holder there that has the capacity for 24 anvils and what you actually get with it is your top anvil there that goes in the machine uh, you have a one inch, two inch and three inch radius anvil there. Now these are really easy to make if you want uh, more or a different style. But Matt is going to be making them soon, hopefully. And they should be on the website for you to purchase more. Another little feature you get is the water trap with the air pressure adjuster on there. So that helps with the speed and setting up and then also your oiler there so again helps with the longevity of the machine another good little feature is the foot pedal to basically use this like an accelerator but it does have the option of clicking in for full power and then pressing it again so you can ease off the power there okay so i'm going to change the tool in over now just to give you an idea of how it's done and how, how easy it is to change so I'm just going to release the wing nut at the back that. And then it's very easy. If I twist that handle at the back, the top arm goes up. And once I've got enough clearance, the top die there comes out. I've undone my grub screws. There's four grub screws there, so it won't come loose. Make sure I just swap them over. Put that one in. It goes in the top. Just lower that one to suit. And then just to fine tune it, I bring it down to the gap that I want. Normally around two mil if I'm working on a piece of 1.5. So the capacity for this is 1.2 in steel and two mil in aluminium. So it's got plenty of range in there. A lot of the panels that I produce are 1.5. So uh, it works perfectly for what I'm after. So once I've got my gap there and I'm happy, just tighten it up with a wing nut and that locks it into place and sets that gap. I'll do them grub screws up now and it's ready to use. It's literally as easy as that. So very simple process for changing over the tooling. Okay, so my first test for this machine, I've added these two pieces, uh, one mil mold steel with filler wire. So I'll just show you that. Hopefully that focuses there. And then I've done 1.5 in aluminium there. So they've both got penetration throughout the back. And my aim with this experiment or test piece is I'd like them well to become completely flat. So if I've got the right pressure and the right gap, that should be my result. So I'm gonna lubricate the panels because that's really important. It just stops them binding when you're putting them through uh, the anvils stops from catching and stuff like that it allows you to move the panel freely so really important i'm just going to use the wd-40 and uh, that is how i'm going to approach this experiment okay so just going to start using this i will say ear protection is a must it is very noisy but as a comparison because i already have another machine not as noisy as that one so this is something to bear in mind now i don't know why whether it's something to do with the construction the other one I have is a box section frame and whether that just resonates through. But uh, for some reason, this is probably half the, the noise level uh, that it generates compared to that one. Uh, that's something to bear in mind if you've got neighbors nearby or, or workshops close by that don't like the noise. So um, yeah, ear protection is a must, but I just thought I'd point that out. I'm just gonna lube the panel up now. I haven't got it bolted to the floor, so it may wonder uh, when I'm using it, but just going to lube that front and back. I'm just going to planish that well now. Okay, I've 
bring it to the camera so you can see. I've left the other side here so you can see what it's like. But as you can see there, I'm turning it over. It's completely flattened the penetration there and it's flattened the weld there. So aluminium gets a thumbs up. So very happy with that result. And as you can see, that literally just took seconds. So I'll do the steel one now. It's going to leave the front and back. Okay, so hopefully the camera picks that up. But that is uh, TIG weld completely flattened. I'll just clean off the back. It's a penetration all flat as well. So naturally, the steel is gonna be harder, will take slightly longer than the aluminium. Uh, if you've got a decent TIG run on there, that will definitely help. If you've got a bit too much uh, wire on the top, uh, take it off with a grinder or bout sander and that will just help the whole process. If you've got to try and flatten a, a nugget, you could end up uh, damaging the face of, even though these are hardened, but you could end up damaging the face of the tooling. And uh, as for MIG welds, I wouldn't stick MIG welds through them at all. Even if you grind them off, they're very hard. And like I said, you probably end up damaging the tooling. Uh, so that's not good. But as for TIG, as you can see there, the results are, I'm very happy with. So I should now make um, like an aluminium blister or bulge, uh, something uh, for a pre-war car. My friend Simon's got an Austin 7 and he's got this uh, blister down the side of it just to allow a bit of space uh, for the accelerator and uh, it looks a real nice feature on the bodywork so I'm going to replicate something like that and I'm going to do it with this machine so I'm looking forward to doing that now. Okay, so I didn't realise they uh, and press record so I'm starting this bit again. Um, this is my blister. This is part two of my sample pieces basically. So this is the type of thing you'd find on the pre-war car. Um, either on the bonnet or on the bodywork to just give you a bit of space. Um, so uh, I'm going to treat it in exactly the same manner as how I flatten the weld but with this um, because I want to generate more shape I will start off on a lower uh, radius anvil and then as the shape generates I will then put a different uh, radius anvil in to suit. I'm just going to blend it down into that uh, teardrop uh, shape piece there and yeah I'll just show the processes of uh, what's involved and what you can create with it. Okay, so my blister there is complete. Um, that's probably taken me about all of 15 minutes to do. Uh, literally just turned up a very quick edge on it. And yeah, I'm very happy with uh, the shape that it's generated. So that's what I was after, something like that. Um, so the finish you get with this isn't like an English wheel. So you're not gonna get your mirrored finish it's, as it's a completely different process. Um, but I really like the, the natural look on there. I've done a bucket seat recently and I've kept all the marks in, so I think it 
adds a bit of character to the job. But again, every job is different, so that's just me personally. Um, yeah, so again, I'm going to be using it for uh, flattening wells and generating shape like this, but you may have a, find a different use for it. Um, I think it's got plenty of scope for adding tooling. I think you can make your own tooling very easily. Um, I've seen some ideas of stretching guides and stuff like that. Um, but Matt is bringing out some tooling soon, so I can't wait to see what he actually brings out. Um, again, what can we say? Uh, I like the possibility, and I've seen this on Instagram, where you can detach this machine from the stand. And if you had a dent in the roof, you know, you could uh, get it into the middle of the roof. I think it's got a 27 inch throat there. You've got 11 inch drop there. So you've got loads of room to get into panels and uh, planish up areas. So that's how I'm looking at using the machine. Um, yeah, I, I, that's very appealing to me and what I do for a living. Uh, the fact that I can make my own tooling, again, is a plus. I like the quick release. I think that's fantastic. It takes a matter of seconds. Uh, it probably takes you longer to undo the four grub screws that hold the tooling in. You know, uh, that's probably the longest part of it. But I like the features. I think the foot pedal is a great upgrade. Uh, the water trap, an oiler, um, again, that's great. And all for, I think when I checked this morning, it was 395 on their website. So very little money. As somebody who's purchased this machine, I think it's a lot of machine for the price. Now I've paid a lot more for a planishing hammer and got a lot less. So um, I've been on both ends of this, um, but I'm very impressed with the price and what you actually get. Um, it took me about 20 minutes to actually set up and get it ready to start using it. Um, once I find a position in the shop, I will um, mount it onto the floor so I don't uh, worry about it wandering. And yeah, the fact that it isn't as noisy as the other planishing hammer is a huge bonus. So all in all, I've had a good experience with this. If I find out, um, find anything that I'm not happy with in the next few weeks and that, I'll leave a comment in the comments um, for, for everyone to see uh, and just keep you updated about how I uh, find this machine or if I find another way of uh, getting the most out of this machine then I'll, I'll be sure to pass that information on but I've got to say I'm very happy the price is amazing and yeah hopefully you've enjoyed the uh, samples of the, the welding samples and just a bit of shape in there that I've done so uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. I've got uh, many more tour reviews and some good projects coming up soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.